It's 6 p.m. on a Tuesday here in Korea. Welcome to our newscast. I'm Daniel Che. Let us begin with the headlines. President Park Geun-hye makes clear that she'll support projects that can help keep Korea innovative with measures like tax breaks and deregulation. A day after Korea's environment ministry accused Nissan of cheating emissions, Korean owners of the Japanese SUV are reportedly preparing to take legal action to seek full refunds or a recall and compensation. Representatives from Seoul and Tokyo meet for talks in a follow-up to the landmark deal on Japan's wartime sex slavery issue. They make some progress on ironing out the details for establishing a foundation to compensate Korean victims. We begin with the president's congratulatory message at the ASEAN Asian Leadership Conference. During the event on Tuesday, President Park geun said innovation is a critical tool for survival in a world with such an unstable economy. She added Seoul is adapting to this environment through its creative economy drive and three-year economic development plan. In line with the development plan, President Park said she will advocate for projects that support tax exemptions and deregulation to boost artificial intelligence and the bio-industry. The conference that runs until Wednesday aims to find possible solutions for pressing issues in Asia. South Korea and Japan met for working-level talks on the follow-up measures for their landmark settlement on Japan's wartime sexual slavery reached late last year. Officials say there was progress in Tuesday's meeting in Tokyo. For more on what was on the agenda, let's turn to our Kwon Sowa. Talks between Korea and Japan on the so-called comfort women issue are not over, even though the two sides reached a landmark agreement on it last December. There's still the matter of compensation, 1 billion Japanese yen, or roughly 9 million U.S. dollars, that Japan promised as part of the deal. The South Korean Foreign Ministry's Director General for Northeast Asian Affairs, Tong Byung Won, and his Japanese counterpart, Kimiro Ishikane, met for closed door working level talks in Tokyo on Tuesday. As part of follow up measures, they focused on ironing out the details of the establishment of a foundation through which the Japanese government would compensate Korean victims. Seoul, which is in charge of this part of the deal, briefed Tokyo on the progress of the project. We explained to the Japanese side how and when a preparatory committee will be established and the timeline for setting up the foundation, which led to deep discussions during the meeting. The spokesperson also reiterated that the ministry still aims to launch the preparatory committee as early as this month. Reporters on site were told that Japan agreed to Korea's plans. An estimated 200,000 women, most of them Korean, were forced into sexual slavery by Japanese soldiers during World War II. On Tuesday, Japanese Asa Shimbun reported that one victim's testimony was found to be almost identical to other witness accounts, as well as a description of the Japanese military's regulations. Moon Okju, who died in 1996, wrote she had to serve dozens of men of all ranks from morning till night. Konsoa, Arirang News. Shifting our focus to North Korea, which is struggling to sustain itself after its nuclear and missile test early this year, triggered a raft of sanctions that appeared to be tightening the news on the regime. Feeling the pinch, Pyongyang is reportedly trying to earn foreign currency in any way it can. Connie Kim reports. North Korea appears to be trying to bring in extra cash and boost domestic production in the wake of the U.N. sanctions on the regime. In one sign of this, the North appears to be registering foreign vessels as North Korean ships. Voice of America reported Tuesday that the North registered six vessels from Middle East nations, including Iran and the UAE, from last year to March. The report says the foreign shipping companies benefit from avoiding certain taxes, while Pyongyang gets the foreign currency it craves. Voice of America points out that the practice is a clear violation of U.N. sanctions that ban not only North Korean ships operating under foreign flags of convenience, but also foreign vessels registering under North Korea. Meanwhile, the North seems to be gearing up for revival of a campaign to boost production. The North carried out its so-called 70-day battle ahead of its Workers' Party Congress earlier this month. The campaign was aimed at boosting production and infrastructure development for the once-in-a-generation political gathering. 
And now, people within North Korea are reportedly anxious about an upcoming review of the campaign. In a report by Washington-based Radio Free Asia, the chief editor of Japan-based Asia Press, Chido Ishimaru, said the review will start after all party Congress participants return to their hometowns. The review is expected to include critiques of the performance of the officials involved in the 70-day battle and calls for more enthusiasm to boost production. In another sign North Korea may be looking elsewhere for cash, there is speculation on the activities of Kim Jong-nam, the president of the North's parliament. South Korea said Kim is believed to be traveling to Africa via China as part of a tour of African nations, adding North Korea has had many diplomatic contacts with African countries in the past. Connie Kim, Arirang News. South Korea is still in a state of armistice with the North is seeking to abolish some military service exemptions amid a population decline that's likely to continue to act as a drag on manpower in years to come. Kim Yeonbin explains the changes. The South Korean military is seeking to abolish a rule that exempts science and engineering students from conscription as a way to deal with Korea's rapidly shrinking population. All able-bodied men are required to serve in the military for roughly two years. But every year, around 2,800 students are exempted from service so they can focus on their studies. Also exempt from service are people with talents seen as boosting Korea's industrial potential. But the exemptions are expected to end by the year 2023. Starting 2020, we believe that there will be a shortage of military personnel, so we are working with other departments to phase out the exemptions by the year 2023. The decision was based in part of Korea's rapidly shifting demographics. According to the latest defense white paper, South Korea has around 630,000 active duty personnel and 3.1 million reservists. The number of men in their 20s currently stands at 350,000. But the figure is expected to decrease to 250,000 by the year 2022. In addition, the Defense Ministry predicts that by 2023, there will be a troop shortage of roughly 30,000 soldiers. North Korea outnumbers the South in terms of troops two to one, even though Seoul has more modern weaponry. But the ministry still needs to find ways to deal with the growing personal shortage. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Shifting gears to a different story now, it's been hailed by critics as mesmerizing, extraordinary and ferociously brilliant. And now Korean author Han Gang can add the ultimate endorsement to her novel, The Vegetarian, this year's Man Booker International Prize for Fiction. Kim mo introduces us to the first Korean to ever win the prestigious award and her works. Korean novelist Han Gang and her translator Deborah Smith won the 2016 Man Booker International Prize for Han's novel The Vegetarian at a ceremony in London on Monday. The Vegetarian, which tells the story of a woman who wants to reject human brutality and stops eating meat, was one of 155 books submitted for this year's prize. Han beat world-renowned writers including Nobel laureate Orhan Pamuk and international bestseller Elena Ferrante. Han and Smith, who only began studying Korean seven years ago, will share the 72,000 U.S. dollar prize money. Through her book, Han said she wanted to raise questions and share her thoughts about being human. Smith says the book has something for everyone, regardless of where they are from. It deserves a wider audience, um, also that it has the potential to reach that wider audience. You know, it has universal appeal. The Man Booker Prize, which has been around for more than 40 years, is considered one of the world's most distinguished literature prizes. Local experts expect the win to motivate Korean novelists to reach out to foreign readers and give a boost to the local publishing scene. Kim mo Arirang News. Plum Black and White, we turn our shift fifth focus to digital era. The two Korean tech giants are among the roughly 450 companies participating in the country's largest ICT event that kicked off in Seoul this morning. At the World IT, IT Show, visitors can experience what it's like to live the smart life through displays of a wide range of things from virtual reality, Internet of Things and smart cars to cloud computing, artificial intelligence and big data as well. Samsung Electronics featured its waterproof Galaxy S7 Edge 
and Gear 360, which can capture 360-degree videos. Local rival LG Electronics has played its smart home service, the Smart Thin Q sensor, which allows users to connect and convert all electronic devices to its smart home appliances and the Internet. A number of people here in Korea are planning to take legal action against Nissan following revelations that suggest a Japanese automaker cheated on emissions tests. Fanning the flame further, the Japanese automaker continues to deny any wrongdoing. Kim min -ji fills us in on disappointed Korean consumers' immediate angry response. Korean owners of the Nissan SUV caught up in an emissions cheating scandal are reportedly preparing to take legal action against the company. Korean law firm Patton says it is gathering local Nissan Qashqai owners to file a class action lawsuit against both Nissan Korea and local dealers. The lawsuit will seek cancellation of the fraudulent buyer contracts and a full refund of the purchase price. For plaintiffs that wish to keep the vehicle, we will also be asking for a recall and compensation for the company's role in manipulating data on vehicle performance and fuel efficiency. This comes a day after Korea's environment ministry accused Nissan of using a cheat device to manipulate emissions tests following a probe into 20 diesel cars sold in Korea, sparked by the Volkswagen emission scandal last year. The ministry found that the Cash K emitted 20 times more nitrogenous compounds than the standard, while the 19 other models discharge around 1 to 10 times the standard. The ministry will order a recall of the Nissan vehicles, fine Nissan Korea 280,000 U.S. dollars, and suspend local sales of the SUV. In response, Nissan Korea expressed regret for causing concern but denied the allegations. On its website, it said the company does its best to meet strict regulations in all the markets it has entered. Nissan also asserted that it does not and does not employ illegal defeat or cheat devices in any of its cars, adding it will cooperate with the Environment Ministry to resolve the issue. More than 800 Nissan Qashqai units have been sold in Korea from November 2015 through last week. Kim min Arirang News. Seven customer products containing banned ingredients will be taken off the shelves and and in Korea, the ingredient list includes PHMG, the same chemical that caused the uproar surrounding products made by Oxy Reckitt Ben Kieser. Lee Min Young brings us this report. The Korean government has announced it is recalling seven products found to contain banned toxic substances and it is banning future sales of the products in Korea. The Environment Ministry also said Tuesday the recalled products will be destroyed. The ministry said that they put a ban on the sales of those products last January as soon as the test results came out, as well as recalling most of the remaining products on the market to have them disposed of. The recall is the result of a broader government investigation into over 300 products suspected of containing toxins and on sale in Korea from July to January. The seven products subject to the recall, including an antibacterial spray for shoes, were found to contain banned substances. One of the substances on the list was PHMG, a toxic chemical that became notorious after it was found in humidifier sterilizers made by Oxy Reckitt Benkiser. Oxy is facing allegations that the product was responsible for more than 200 deaths over the past five years, and it knew of the product's dangers, including links to pulmonary inflammation and fibrosis. Other banned substances include formaldehyde and chloric acid, which were found in disinfectants for air conditioners and heaters, drain detergents and tattoo inks. The ministry also said its investigation of over 15,000 products sold on and offline found 62 violations of current labeling requirements and that corrections have been ordered. The ministry also said it would apply much stricter safety standards to 15 consumer products, including detergents, deodorants and air fresheners, subject to priority control and will expand its investigation into spray products in particular. Lee Min-young, Arirang News. 
A special ceremony was held on this Tuesday on Korea's southwestern island of Sorokdo in recognition of Sorokdo National Hospital, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary since opening in 1916. About 5,000 people attended the event, including Prime Minister Hwang kyo and the governor of South Jeolla Province, Yi nak yeon In a speech, Hwang praised the hospital as a commune of hope for patients and wanted it to remain a symbol of healing and communication for the next century to come. The hospital has exclusively treated patients suffering from Hansen's disease since it was established during Japan's colonial era. These are the stories we're following at this hour. For more updates, do tune in at 10 p.m. Korea time for Moon Gonyoung's News Center. Thank you for watching.